we're gonna get a pisco shower. My hands are freezing. Used to be good at beer pong. For making the pi <laughs> we're gonna make a pisco sour. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good at home. I hope you're safe. We're not gonna make any food, but we're gonna make a really important drink. This is the most representative drink of the brewing culture, and I'm gonna tell you some things about this. But before telling you the ingredients and showing you how to make a pisco sour, let's talk a little bit about the pisco. For making pisco, we need to ferment the grape juice and then we distill it. And this is a, uh, what makes a big difference between pisco and Italian grappa. We technically distills the wine, while for making Italian grappa, what they use is the leftovers after they make wine. There's also a really big dispute between our pisco and Chilean grape distilled. They call it pisco as well. But well, even if we both are fighting for the same name and to be recognized as pisco, there's something you should know about this. These two drinks are made in totally different ways. But about this, I will talk next time. We have uh, different kinds of pisco. We have pure pisco, we have aromatic pisco, and also we have something we call acholado. Pure pisco is quite strong, and it's considered pisco distillation that is made of one of these four different grapes, which are quebranta, negra criolla, mollar, and uvina. For making pure pisco, we normally just use one of these different kinds of grapes. We normally don't mix them. For aromatic, we have four of the four different kinds of grapes that we can use for that, which are Italia, Torontel, Moscatel, and Alvilla. But the difference between pure and aromatic is that in aromatic, we can mix two or more different kinds of grapes. And acholado is nothing more than the mix of these two uh, kinds of pisco, pure and aromatic. And now, depending on the kind of pisco we have, there's different things we normally do. For example, for pisco sour, we normally use a pure pisco. The most common, the one you find in all supermarkets, it's quebranta. I would love to make one with Negra Criolla, which is a bit harder to find, but pure pisco for pisco sour. Based on historians, pisco sour was first made in 1920, at that time a famous bar called Morris Bar, that was located right at Lima downtown in an important street we called Giron de la Unión, which is actually a boulevard. Victor Morris came at the beginning of 1900 to Peru, and he went straight to this place called Apurima. A couple of years later, he met his future wife, and then in Lima, in 1916, they opened what was known as the Morris Bar, one of a beautiful and luxury bar of that time, where four years later, they will be creating the most representative drink of Peru which is Pisco Sour. Some story says that the creation of this drink happened because of the absence of whiskey for making Pisco Sour. Of course, this Pisco Sour became that famous really quick that it was uh, taken to different hotels like the Maori or Bolivar Hotel that are like the most important hotels of that time and to a lot of different English bars in Lima downtown where famous Hollywood people like John Way, Ava Gardner and Orson Welles would enjoy it when they visited Peru in those times. I'm talking about 40s and 50s. So now that you know a little bit more about pisco sour and pisco in general, I'm gonna show you how to make a really good pisco sour. We could use a blender. Well, many people use a blender. I honestly don't like using a blender. I'm gonna tell you why later. Here I have a couple of uh, shakers. This is a classic shaker or a three body shaker used a lot. This one is quite convenient to use it at home, but not at the, at the bar because it's quite a bit more difficult to clean it. And when you're rushing, when you need to make many drinks really fast, this is gonna complicate you. But having this both together is what is called Boston style shaker or American shaker. This is used more at bars and at business because easy, you have these two bottoms put it together, shake, and it's really easy to clean. So, get my shaker. I'm gonna have three ounces of pisco. What the recipe I'm gonna do now is the three one one. Three of pisco, one of syrup, one of lime. There's another one called three two one. Three of pisco, two of syrup, and one of lime. I don't like that one, that one is too sweet. 
so I need three ounces of pisco. Three with yapa, okay? With a little bit extra, doesn't matter. Then our next ingredient is gonna be simple syrup. We need one ounce of this. The next ingredient I'm gonna add is the lime. And for that, I'm just gonna cut the top, as I always do. And I'm gonna squeeze it in the same way I squeeze it when I make ceviche, for example. Using my lime squeezer and pressing just half or a little bit more than half, but no more than that. We don't want to have the, well, the bitter flavor of the skin, of this white part uh, between the lime and the skin. We don't want that those tannins, we don't need that bitter part, so there we go. Used to be good at beer pong. Yes. Okay, so now let's add one ounce of our lime juice. The next ingredient I'm gonna add is uh, the ice. I have six ice cubes here, and as I said, I like adding this at the end. If I put it at the beginning, well, it just feels a bit different. You, you try the home, maybe or use the same. It feels a bit stronger when I do it this way, and it feels a bit more watery when I put the ice at the beginning. After that, we add the egg whites at the end, which is one ounce. It's one egg white, actually. It's, it's important to put it at the end, because the acidity of the lime, or any other ingredient we use for making a pisco sour can scramble your eggs there. And I don't think you want some cooked eggs inside. If you let it rest for over a minute, that's gonna happen. So that's why we put it at the end. And after that, let's get ready for shaking. I will use just my whole shaker, this is the, my classic or three body shaker. If you don't have much experience shaking, it's gonna take you probably 30 seconds, uh, 20, 30, 40, one minute, but just try to do it really hard. Keep it closed really well. Hold it from top and bottom really hard. If we don't hold this really well and this gets opened, we're gonna get a physical shower. Champagne showers, champagne showers. So let's shake. Two hours later. This is it. My hands are freezing and I think there's fire behind me. Before taking the lid on, we're gonna wait a couple of seconds. There's a lot of pressure inside and if you open this right away, it can jump. Every drop counts here, we don't want to waste anything. We open this little by little. You see, there's a little, couple of drops coming out. Once we have this, we're gonna hold it on top with one or two fingers, however you feel more comfortable. We need our glass in front of us, stir, and then, from here, face it down, and we move our shaker, like this. So, this is our pisco sour after we served it. There's a couple of differences between making this in a shaker, like here, or on a blender, and that can be shown in the foam. You can see we have like a bit less between one and a bit less of one finger of foam. You can have even a bit more if you add uh, more egg white and shake even harder, <laughs> but that's a normal thing. If you make it on a blender, at least half of your glass is gonna be foam, and the texture is gonna be different. Another difference is this one. In this case, we melt the ice. After you shake it, if you use a shaker, you're gonna see how much ice you have left. It's gonna be probably 40% or 50% than what you had at the beginning. But if you make it in a blender, you're breaking that ice. So what you're gonna have in your glass are tiny pieces of ice. It's gonna be more like a frozen lemonade or so. So you can try it, it's gonna be nice, it's gonna taste good, but then with the time, it's gonna be a bit more watery. Many people like it like that, with that texture. I prefer to do it on a shaker. Here you are, this is gonna be up to you, as I always say. And don't forget, you can make different versions. The other most popular version is with passion fruit. And by the way, that's my favorite so far. And you can mix other fruits. Remember, this is pisco sour, so it has to be sour. If you want to make a pisco sour of strawberries or of mango, you can, but you need to add something sour. You can mix it with lime or passion fruit or any other fruit that is sour enough 
to make this drink. We can, well, you know, we use a little bit of pisco, but if we forget about the pisco, this is like a protein shake. We have a lot of proteins in the egg whites, and I encourage you to drink once a day. Thank you so much, guys, and don't forget to LSD, like, subscribe, and donate. And this way we can keep bringing you more really nice videos, sharing with you more of our Peruvian culture. Thank you so much, until next time. Bye. Ah, su madre. Está bueno, ¿eh?